questions for Coach Dave, we'll go front row left. Dave Biddle, 24 7 Sports. Coach, any update on the quarterback situation? Yeah. So, um, Um, so both graded out champions in the last scrimmage. Um, both have gotten better. Uh, but, but to this point right now, I mean, um, as honestly as I could say it, you know, they, there's not one that have won the job. There's not one that's lost the job. Uh, there's been times over this camp where I felt like uh, one was going to take over and the other one came back. It was like a horse race, and they just kept pulling, pulling away, and then the other one would catch up. Um, I think, first off, that our staff feels confident with both of them which is exciting. Uh, I think this is two good players getting after it. I think they're making each other better. Um, we've got them more reps than I think we have anybody else in, in the camps, any of the camps that I've been here. So in the, the two fields helped us having uh, 120 guys able to practice was, was big. Um, you know, I asked the staff uh, this weekend after the scrimmage, you know, I just took a, a straw poll and it was, it was almost split right down the middle. Um, so what does that mean? Well, I think that the, it's going to continue to go on this week, um, you know, and we'll go from there, right? I, is there a chance that both of them can play in the first game? I think the answer is yes, that's a chance. But we're going to keep working. We, got, we don't have to make that decision right now. Um, but I can tell you that, that I am pleased with their progress and, um, you know, our staff feels strong with both of them playing. Um, you know, where it goes, we'll keep putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, Ryan, when it comes to choosing a quarterback, you mentioned talking to the staff. How much weight does the defensive staff's thoughts on having to defend somebody weigh? A little bit, but uh, I, I like to get their their feedback on what they see every day for sure, and that's why I did that. Um, same thing on offense. I like to know what the old line coach thinks of the quarterbacks. I like to know what the special teams coach sees. You know, you just it's good to get a, a consensus of of that, but ultimately. You know, it'll be my decision. As you said, it's split down the middle. Was the defense in favor of one guy versus the offense in favor of the other guy, perhaps? Uh, no comment. Uh, fourth row middle, Pat Murphy, 24 7 Sports. Ryan, you, you emphasize that you're comfortable with both, but obviously, the longer this goes on, the more perception is that, that maybe one guy isn't. I know Dave asked you last week if you believe in the adage of two quarterbacks, you don't have one. How, how do you, if you do have to handle this, how do you handle it with, with both guys? Well, I, you know, there's been situations in the past where you have the two really good quarterbacks uh, on the roster and, and, you know, these things have them have a way of working themselves out. Now, when? Um, but, but I can't sit here and honestly say, and I, I met with the quarterbacks and um, they, they agreed. You know, there's, there's not one that's that much further ahead, but, they both graded out champions in the, in the scrimmage. They're both playing very well. So that that's really good, and we have confidence in them. So um, we've talked about this before. You don't know until you get into the game what exactly you have. And the practice is good. Practice gives us a, um, a snapshot of what you're going to see in a game. But once you start getting tackled and you're in the situations and you're live, that's, that's a whole other thing. So um, we'll just keep trying to you know, figure it out one day at a time. But I, But... I've been in situations, not very many, where you, you don't have a quarterback, and it's like that's not a good feeling. We're going to have a quarterback, and you know we may have two. Um, and if they deserve to play, they're going to play. Uh, third row left, Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, yes, um, on the offensive line, uh, just uh, have I, any of those position battles been settled? And what was your evaluation of how they performed on the scrimmage Saturday? Um, I, I think that they've improved. Um, I think. As we head into the the first game, you're, you'll see. Um, I have to make another correction. Um, it, Josh does like to be nick called Josh. The guys were calling him Jimmy, so uh, I'm, it's back to Josh Simmons. So getting spun around here in circles. But Josh, uh, you'll see Josh at left tackle. Um, and as of right now, going into this week, you know he'll he'll probably be the starter. Um, and then you know Donovan is the incumbent at left guard. He's played well, and <clears throat> we'll plan on him being the starter. Our center, um, you know, coming out of camp, Carson's a little bit ahead of Vic, but that'll keep working. Um, you know, for the next couple of weeks, they'll they'll keep going at it in practice. We'll keep evaluating, but I would say that you know right now, and, and we looked at that. Um, 
you know, Matt Jones is, is had a really good camp, probably the best football he's been playing. And then at right tackle, um, and we'll probably start with Josh Fryer. Um, but Luke Montgomery is going to play football this year. He's uh, got a lot of talent. He uh, has shown that um, he can compete as a freshman, and we're very excited about him. Um, so, you know, we, we have some other battles still going on. Tegra's in the mix, Zen's in the mix. Like I said, with Vic, Enox, you know, knocking on the door. So in a situation where we felt like we were thin in the old line, you turn around after a few months and we feel like we have some decent depth. So, um, you know, nothing set in stone. But as of right now, I'd say those are the leaders in the clubhouse. Ryan, do you believe in the idea if you have two quarterbacks, you have none? That whole idea? Uh, no. No. Oh, I mean, if you had Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, you wouldn't say that. I guess because it's, it's, you've talked like you don't necessarily want to have to play two quarterbacks in, in a game, but it's maybe reaching a point where maybe the idea is being opened up. I guess what are they doing that it's going on this long that you actually feel like both of these guys might actually play against Indiana? And what would that look like yeah. if you did it? Yeah, great question. I, I don't know the answer to the second part of that yet. Um, but that, what are we seeing in practice? Well, I, I think we're seeing, um, first off, in the run game, I, I think they have a pretty good handle on what we're doing. Um, in, in, in the passing game, I think that they've done a nice job of making good decisions. I think they're, they're getting more and more comfortable being in the pocket and getting the timing of the passing game. Um, that's not something that you just it just happens. You know, it took Justin Fields a little while. CJ had a great feel for it. Um, Dwayne, you know, that that was something that came um, pretty naturally to him as well. But I think both of the guys are starting to really feel that rush and anticipate what's going on. But uh, uh, you know, a big thing for us has been situations. I think I've mentioned that before. So we've put them in two minute situations. Um, you know, Kyle had a really nice drive in the two minute drill. Uh, so did Devin. Um, you know, one of them was to, to score. Well, actually, there was two touchdown drives and two minute drills in the scrimmage on Saturday. Those are good signs. When you're seeing them play the game, you're seeing them win third down in the red zone, two minute, because that's where you make your money as a quarterback. And and we're seeing some real improvement in those areas. Now, we got to go put it in the field, and you don't know until you get into a game. But um, but those are the areas that we're seeing the, the biggest improvement. The third row right, Rob Oliver, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, Ryan, you're seeing improvement in both guys. That said, are you surprised that one has not stepped forward with the one guy's been in the system a little longer than the other? Are you, are you surprised at all that some guy no, has no. won the job? Yeah, no, I, no, I don't think so. Um, no, I, I think uh, they're both doing really well. And, and the quarterback is, is a situation that, um, you know, is very unique. But if you think about other positions where there's two really good players and, and they both roll – it's a lot easier than playing a quarterback because that's a little bit more rare. Um, but, you know, they're, they're both going to be really good players and how this shakes out. I just I don't have a crystal ball on that. And ultimately, we have to do what's best for Ohio State. But, um, you know, for me to sit here and say, you know, one guy's this much further ahead than the other guy right now is, is just not accurate. And that's why I wanted to take a, a poll of the staff to see if maybe I'm not seeing this the right way. And it came back almost 50-50. And I'm like, OK, so they see it the way I see it. If you have, um, if it's even, sure. intangibles, yeah. is that, what's the type of the, is how vocal a guy is, how much of a leader he is, how he's regarded sure. by teammates? Yeah. Is that like, OK, you've got a, more than a coin flip, it's that. It's a great question. And I, I think it's, it's a great question thing to hit on so <clears throat> yeah if it's all equal you you want the guy that has it you want the guy that's the leader the guy that's leading men into the end zone that um on you know third and long or you know you're backed up you know can or after you know a bad play or you know we're down by a score can rally the team or can find a way to go dive into the end zone on you know fourth down to you think about you know, some of the quarterbacks we've had and some of the big plays that they've had in big games. Like, that's what you need in a quarterback, you know, somebody that you can rally around. So, yeah, if, if all things are equal, we want the better leader, the better decision maker, and ultimately the best competitor. Because playing a quarterback is, is just constantly competing. And there's going to be good days, there's going to be bad. You have to be resilient, as, as we all know, especially being the quarterback at Ohio State. So those are all things that are in consideration. 
Brian, how does playing two quarterbacks, if you're going to end up playing two quarterbacks, how does that change for like game week preparation? When you start to transition to prepare for Indiana, does that change anything about it when you have two guys you're trying to get ready to play that game? Well, I think first is that you know the other team has to prepare for two different guys. I think that's one thing. I think um, two will continue to you know split up the reps the way we have. Um, make sure that guys are getting what they need. You know, we've been getting a bunch of reps. I, I still see it the same way. Um, but that's why we work so hard in the preseason to get all those reps on the two fields to make sure that we we're getting um, you know all the looks for the guys. Because we you know when you put in a play, there's a lot of looks that can happen on one play, and you have to get you know a bunch of them to to really master that play. So we've done a bunch of that. Um, but then, yeah, we'll we'll kind of divvy them up. You know the way that's appropriate based on how we're going to play the game. You said that you were looking for a sizable gap. Is it still reasonable to say that gap could materialize with the time you have left? A thousand percent. I, I, when I met with the guys yesterday, I told them that. I mean, one guy may just kind of take a step forward and and then play the whole game. That, that could happen. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, every, everything's an evaluation right now. And um, But I, if I sat here right now, I think both deserve to play. Brad, I just think it pertains to quarterback that you're saying not everything set in stone on the offensive line. How much of this is just the same mindset that you're keeping from the spring where you were keeping track of everything and making sure everything was competitive? You guys might is there is there a level you guys might have an idea of who's going to play, but you don't want to name them because you're trying to keep it competitive through the entire offseason? Uh, I hear what you're saying. I think that's just naturally happened, but I think that the competitiveness has made both of them better. But um but no, this is this is not something that um, you know. I think I said earlier, would have liked to had had somebody emerge, you know, ideally. But that's okay too. Um, when we were thinking about Max Duggan last year, right? He was a backup going into the first game of the season, and he ended up winning the Heisman Trophy. You know, you think about some of the situations. You know, you had Tua and you had Jalen Hurts, and you've had different situations. The, the national championship year with three different quarterbacks playing. So there, there's there's precedence behind it. So. Um, and, I, and I think the more these guys play, the more we'll get a feel for in-game how they're going to play. The, the common progression in some of these guys who play as young in their career on the offensive line is like Donovan played that bison role, yeah. and then Josh played that bison role. It kind of set them up to play the next year. Do yes. you envision that as like a, a role that Luke Montgomery can kind of take a hold of and get experience? Yeah, it could be. It could be, yeah. I mean, we, we feel like we have some pretty good tight ends now. but. But yeah, I mean, those are the types of things we're looking for, you know, to get Luke involved. He's done a nice job, and everything you invest in Luke, you're going to get back down the road. Uh, back wall, Jeremy Birmingham, Rivals, the podcast. Brian, when you watch a young quarterback roll to his right, step up into the pocket, and then throw a game-winning touchdown with 20 seconds left in his first high school varsity game, do you hear more about that as a dad or a coach? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a dad. Yeah, that was it was it was a pretty cool moment. Now, for this group, you know, it, have you noticed any sort of discernible difference in the way the team responds to Kyle or Devin, or is it is that down the middle? I mean, it, it seems like outside looking in, we see they have very different personalities. Devin is a little bit more outgoing. Yes. Kyle, Kyle's confident, but he's quiet. Yeah. Do you see any sort of any differentiation in that respect? I've been looking close, but you're right. They both have different personalities. Kyle has built relationships um, in the locker room, you know, outside of the Woody here for three years. And um, he's got a good group. I mean, the guys uh, really rally around Kyle. They, they, um, you know, they believe in him. They trust in him. They know who he is. Um, you know, Devin um, has really in the last, you know, six months really stepped up in that area. Um, he's got a lot of juice. Um, he takes command on the field. You can feel that when he's out there. Um, so both a little bit different styles, but I, I've been watching close to see how the team rallies around each of them. I, I don't quite feel it's one way or the other. I think they, they're out there practicing. I think as we get closer to the game and we start playing in games, I think you'll maybe feel that a little bit more. But right now, like I said, I think that if you asked our players, they, they believe in both of those guys. You pick both of these quarterbacks in the recruiting process. How much of that in your mind is going back to what okay, Wick, you know, is there a differentiation in your mind when you're recruiting them? Like what made them special and where they are now? Are they both where you expect? Um, you know, the thing we say in recruiting is that the best we can do is we're going to put you in a room with other four and five star guys and let you compete it out and find out where you go. And that 
Uh, there's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. But in the end, you just got to keep coming back and being resilient because that's a huge part of playing quarterback, you know, working through adversity, working through tough times. And the one thing for Kyle is, you know, he's been here now for three years. You know, he's seen it and, you know, probably could have gone somewhere and played as a freshman or a sophomore, but he, he stuck in there and he's been loyal. And so I give him a lot of credit for that. Um, and you look at Devin, who came here when, you know, that was a pretty packed quarterback room when he showed up and he didn't shy away from that competition. So both unique stories, but um, that have gotten to this point right now. And, and then Tristan and Lincoln have their own story. So uh, that's one of the things that makes that room great is that, you know, you know you're going to be in there with really good players. Fifth row right, uh, Cameron T. Robinson, the athletic. <clears throat> Ryan, as you guys prepare, at what point do you just say, okay, they're both going to play, we have to figure out who's going to get the first drive how they're gonna, and how you're going to get the rest of the Yeah, probably, um, you know, we'll work on them a little bit this week. We'll still be mostly, you know, good on good, but we'll start to mix in some stuff. And then as we get into game week, I mean, that's where you got to really start to have a plan on how you want to do it. So is it for you play this week out, and if they're still even, they're both playing it the uh, Yeah, that's fair to say. You, you understand the psychology of this of this position, having played it like I'd imagine 99%, if not 100% of quarterbacks would rather be in a situation where they know they're the guy and not you know rotate every other snap, whatever, whatever your plan is you come up with. Sure. Um, how has your viewpoint on that maybe evolved as you've gone through this camp? Was there ever a point early in your career where like, I don't like the idea of a two quarterback system, but now that you have two, have you changed your mind at all on, on the feasibility of that? Uh, not that I've changed my mind. Uh, I think this this year is unique. Every year is different. Every dynamic is different. And um, I hear what you're saying on that. But it's where we are, and those guys are going to continue to compete, and we'll kind of see who who ultimately emerges. Um, I mean, I'd be surprised if it continues throughout the season. Um, you know, once you get into the games, but it, it's been it's been close. It's been back and forth, and I, I think um, you know to your point. You, you would like to have somebody who's the quarterback to play the whole game. But, you know, for me to say, hey, you know, this guy should just play the whole game and the other one shouldn't, that just um, – that's not the right thing to do right now because they both deserve to play at this point. How much does your schedule from a factor <coughs> decision-making – we've seen programs in the past do something like this going into a year, but they maybe weren't opening with a road conference game. And whatever the public might think of Indiana, it's still a Big Ten road game. Like, how does that factor into ultimately what you're No, it, it factors in. I mean, we got to go play great football. Like, we can't, we can't all of a sudden, you know, just do something because it seems like, you know, um, bottom line is you have to do what's best for Ohio State to win a game, period. That's it. Because we have to be 1-0 and on Saturday night. That's our first goal of the season is to beat Indiana on the road. So... We're going to do everything we can to win that game and make the best decision to put the guys in the right spots to be successful, and then we'll kind of build from there. All right, Clay Hall, WSYX. Coach, it seemed like some of your guys reached out in support of Sammy Sasso. Can you talk about just what that means to have uh, that support? Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a family here at Ohio State. There's a lot of athletes here, but to see something like that happen um, was uh, shocking and – you know, our prayers and thoughts are, are with him and, and his family and, and certainly, the, you know, Coach Ryan and the whole team. Um, just just a tough, tough day. And um, and so, you know, he's got a lot of people around supporting him, but um, but just awful that he, had, you know, had to go through something like this. And, you know, um, you know, it just, boy, it makes you think about how quickly things can end. And, um, you know, tough day. But But certainly everybody here was affected. Uh, football. Do you have uh, equally tough decisions in the NFL with QBs? Or take me back to 13, 14. Uh, not, not really. Uh, usually in those type of situations, you know, the one, the one year I had in Philly, um, you know, they, um, they they signed Sam Bradford to a pretty significant contract, and so he was he was the starter. I mean, when when they're paying him that much money, he's, you know, he's going to be the starter. That's just how it goes in the NFL. The year in, in San Francisco was a little different. Um, you know, Kaepernick was coming off of the year before and uh, a little bit injured, and then Blaine Gabbert was there. So that was kind of back and forth, and Blaine started the first, I think, six or seven games, and then Cap took over for the remaining uh, half of the season. So, um, you know, 
went through it a little bit there, but NFL is a little bit different just because of the contracts and you know how they're signed and drafted. Are the, is the criteria different as well that when you're choosing? No. no, no, I think they're 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 pretty similar actually. Uh, third row, middle, Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, you guys had had six at least six captains in all of your previous seasons. You had only three this year. What was the rationale behind that? Yeah, when we vote, uh, we have a leadership committee vote in February for our leadership committee, and then we re-vote after the spring season to find out who's on the leadership committee. And then by the time we get to the captains, we've already kind of had two votes, and guys have been put into leadership roles. And so I, I felt like we had a, a pretty sizable leadership uh, group. But, you know, when we vote, we try to look at, you know, where is there a gap? Um, Tommy and Cade were significantly higher than everybody else, and then the next, the third one was Xavier, and um, because because he was Block O, because it was the sixth year, because he was the third leading vote getter, we felt like it was appropriate to name him as the third captain. Um, and, and then from there, there was a sizable gap. Now, part of that was because a lot of other guys got over you know ten to fifteen votes, and it was spread pretty good. And and there was some you know three year, third year guys in there, and. Um, but when you have fifth-year guys and sixth-year guys who have been around, um, it's just it's just a little bit of a different feel, it's just a little bit more of a maturity there. Uh, but that doesn't mean the other guys aren't going to be leaders, and we talked about that out in the field. But um, we just try to look at the numbers and figure out, um, you know, where where the gap is and what's appropriate. And we felt like these three were the best. That um, you know, and I, I think our our team did a good job of of voting because. You know, we had C.J. Barnett and James Laurinaitis speak to the team about what it means to be a captain. And, you know, they, they hit the nail right on the head. So um, proud of those guys. Think it's the right group. Do you think there is a benefit to having a smaller group of captains? I think every team is different. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you think about some teams where if you don't have, you know, one, two, or three guys that you feel really strongly about, then sometimes you spread it, you know, four or five. Um, and that usually is indicated by the way it's voted on. Um, this year, there was a pretty strong gap in there, and that was clear. And it worked out, you know, one on offense, one on defense, and then you know, Xavier is going to be a huge contributor on offense, but he's also played, what, over 700 snaps on, on special teams. So you really kind of have an offense, a defense, and a special teams. Um, and so that, that just worked out. I think there's a, a conventional wisdom that when you've got two guys who are that even, mm -hmm. that maybe the tie should go to the young guy because the, when that guy gets all the first team reps, maybe that development would kick in, they would pull farther away. Where do you see a flaw in that logic? Do you see it? Uh, no, I mean, I think, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think if all things are equal, you probably go with the guy who's been in the program longer for, you know, you know, if, if, at least for the first snap. Um, and you go from there, but like you said, we'll have to just keep evaluating it. Um, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, I guess. You said that the when you took that straw poll that it was almost even. So why did why didn't that sway it one way or the other? Because that would imply that somebody was still came out ahead there. Did it not jive with how you were seeing it? Or I just wanted to get an idea what they were thinking. Be <laughs> right, <laughs> Joe Newton, WCMA. With Xavier Johnson wearing the Blanco this year, what stands out to you about his journey? Ooh. Uh, when you think about somebody who came in as a walk-on, earned a scholarship, um, you know, had that touchdown catch in the Notre Dame game, then the next play runs down on kickoff and gets a tackle inside the 20-yard line. The the touchdown against Georgia, um, he played running back for us, had that long run against Indiana. He's played over seven, 700 snaps at special, on special teams here. And we say that when you play on special teams, you become a better football player. You're learning how to play every day. Every time Coach Fleming is in here in a special teams meeting, the guys in there are, are learning about football, how to play in a football position, how to strike at the point of attack, how to avoid contact, how to make contact. And Xavier Johnson is the ultimate example of that. Um, we had Nate Ebner come by practice today. You know, he's just watching practice. and. This guy who played the NFL for 10 years on special teams and um, you know, made a career out of it. He didn't even play high school football. And you know, so it's just a great example, you know, Nate and, and now Xavier, of guys who 
are self-made. You know, they, they had a certain level of talent, but they acquired discipline and so much skill in their life that they've had success. And uh, to get Xavier to come back this year, he's going to be a big part of our team. Brent Wright, Austin Ward, Rivals, the podcast, 97.1. Ryan, with the training camp portion over, is there something that played out that surprised you that you weren't expecting when you guys started camp? Let's see. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see where the O-line's at, but I, but I think some of the additions we've had and, and some of the work that's been done, I, I think that we made some really nice progress there. Um, I think we have more more depth at defensive end than, than I expected to have. Um, now that's probably the biggest takeaways um, overall. I, I will say that, that Carnell Tate continues to impress. Um, to go through what he's been through this this month and then just to continue to show up every day and play the way he's playing. Uh, you're talking about someone who not only has talent but has maturity at a high level. Um, I've been very impressed with Carnell. Uh, I think the, de the other thing that's noticeable is when you come out to practice, you just see, you see the defense getting their hands on more balls overall. I think they're challenging more, more aggressive, a little bit older, and, and a lot more length. Just if you watch our defense go out there, you just look at that defense. That's got a lot, a lot more length and size than maybe we've had in the past. The debate with, or I don't know, the discussion with Carnell in the meeting room. How's that? How do you fit him in when you have that top three coming back? Uh, what are some of the ideas there? Um, I mean, those are all things we'll have to figure out as we get closer to the game. But um, you know, we'll, we'll, there's a lot of snaps. We'll rotate guys. The long season. So it, it, those things f find a way to, to work themselves out at that position. Um, but he just keeps stacking days and keeps impressing. Uh, four for the right, Andy Backstrom, Letterman Rowe. Brian, you mentioned <coughs> last week that the kicking battle was back and forth and you wanted to get it settled by the end of last week. <coughs> Where is it out with Jaden and Parker right now? I have not talked to, to Parker about a final decision on that yet. Um, and um, I, I plan on doing that this afternoon. So I can probably have an update for you next time I get with you. I, it, it, probably nothing more. I think we probably have an idea where we're going into the first game. Um, but I want to talk to Parker before I mention anything to you guys. Front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, with, with Josh at, at left tackle, what has he shown you over the, the last week since he kind of moved there that sort of solidified him there? Yeah, um, ability off the chart, talent off the chart, just jumps out, uh, movement, strength, uh, just needs more and more reps, needs to keep playing, but uh, has a chance to be as good as he wants to be. Does the fact that he, when you were kind of weighing your, all your options, the fact that he has a full year of starting experience, how much did that sort of tip things for him? Um, a, a little bit. But I walked by him the other day, and I said, this, um, this is just like San Diego State. And he said, yes, sir. And then I walked away, and he says, coach, this is nothing like San Diego State. <laughs> okay. um, so I mean, he, he's still he's going to you know, be in a different environment. Um, but but he has played and they, and they play very very good football there, um, and and they play against good teams so that that's a good sign, um, and he's competing every day you know every day he's going against you know J T and Jack and Kenyatta and it just keeps coming at him and so he's responding well to that so that's good, um, it's definitely not a finished product at all, but uh, he does know what it feels like he knows what it's like to play a season and all that so that that is helpful for sure, um, but. You know, it's it's going to be a different challenge for him. Right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row, Tim May podcast. <clears throat> Thanks, Jerry. Uh, I'm not going to ask you more quarterback questions because you've answered those about ten times over the last three weeks. Uh, I do want to ask this: uh, Rodgers or uh, Brady? Which one would you have started? Ooh. You brought it up. <laughs> I would have played them both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When you look at what y'all did in the transfer portal this year with Taiwan Malone bringing what he's brought, it looks like to the middle of that defense, at least substantial depth. Uh, uh, Josh, don't call me Jimmy Simmons at left tackle. Yep. Uh, Davis and Igbenosin, did y'all hit home runs there? Well, how would you describe what y'all, you know, y'all score? Tristan Jebbia, a guy who's played and is offering a, Obviously, leadership in that quarterback room, even though he's not the starter. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to say that yet because we haven't played a game. Uh, but I'll tell you, um, I, I've been very excited about what you just said, all those guys. Uh, excellent. Just um, I think we did a nice job not only evaluating, but also identifying the right fit. 
um, and the guys that you mentioned, the roles that they've taken on. I, I, I'm excited to see all of them. Um, but, but you're right. I, I, I don't want to say because we haven't played anything. How am I going to say anything? But it, it's been very encouraging. But does it jump out, jump out to you that all those guys have played? Yep. You're, you know what I mean? They're yeah. not. You're not bringing along neophytes there. That's right. Yeah, and and you know, like Davidson, um, he played Ole Miss. He's playing in the SEC. I mean, he's playing against real teams every week. Uh, Taiwan has played in those games. Now he, you know, he's really diving into football now. He's all in on football. So I think his best football is ahead of him. But you're right. Th these are not guys that are coming out of high school. They've actually played in games. And you talked about Car Cardinal Tate a minute ago, and Noah Rogers lost his stripe, black stripe, and stuff. It, how pleased are you with that group? I mean, you know, that young group of receivers. That's an obvious kind of an obtuse question, but yeah, excited, excited about them. I think that um, they hit the, the the third week of preseason camp a little bit as a group, but um, you know, Brandon Ennis, um, I believe he got his black stripe off today. Um, and that was exciting uh, to see him because you know he had a nice scrimmage. He's a football player. Um, I think we all wish he was here in January. Um, but that's okay. He, he's he's doing a great job. He um, you know had to come in in the summer and kind of figure all that out, and so he will. And he's got a you know pretty crowded room in there that he's got to work through. But you know he's he's trying to get in on special teams as a returner and, and those type of things. So um, you know Bryson and Noah are working hard, and obviously Carnell's there. So very encouraged with them. I, I like their work ethic. I like where they're at. Uh, they're still freshmen. They're still you know working through all that. But it's. It's been uh, mostly positive. Well, what an era, though, because you're talking about receivers coming in who have are almost complete. I'm not, say, you know, not saying they don't have anything to work on, but it's interesting. The receivers, the top level receivers, are coming out in college football now, isn't it? To you, Ryan? Well, they're 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 more. They play more seven on seven, so they know how to run routes more. They know how to deal with man to man. They know how to recognize zone. They they do all that stuff. Um, the areas where you know they don't always get as much opportunity is just the blocking and. You know, taking care of the football, playing on contact, and those type of things. It's still a very physical game, um, and that's where when you're in camp day after day, playing you know with pads and getting tackled and getting hit and you know having the block. I mean, those are all the things that they're working through. But to your point, when it comes to the passing game, um, these guys are much further along than maybe in years past. We're getting short on time, folks. We have time for a couple more. Steve Hellwagen, 24/7 Sports. Hey, Coach, uh, secondary last year gave up some plays there the last couple of games. Uh, you have more depth there this year. Uh, just what uh, what's your overall thought about that group and how they've performed through the first two or three weeks? And who are maybe one or two guys that have been consistent throughout that period, uh, maybe most consistent throughout that period? Yeah, at corner, David, uh, Davison, Denzel, and Jordan, those three have been consistent. Um, Lorenzo's. Uh, learning the position, but he's very competitive and getting after it. Uh, Jermaine Matthews is, has has um, you know flashed. Um, you know the young guys, uh, the Calvin and um, I think I'm missing the Jair, Ryan Turner. I mean those guys have all played, but I think when you look at probably Denzel, Jordan, and Davidson, those probably guys have probably been the most consistent this camp. Uh, it's safety, you know Lathan and. Proc Malik has done a really good job stepping up. You're going to see him play a lot this season. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Um, you know, Jihad's going to be be in the mix for sure uh, and play. And then obviously Cam and Sonny, um, you know, have done well. Um, you know, Cam's missed some time recently, but we'll get him back in there soon. And um, we got him back out there today, I think. So, um, no, I mean, they're, they're like you said, we have more depth than we've had in the past and more length. I will ask you a quarterback question. Sorry, Tim. Um, how much do you weigh floor versus ceiling? Um, that you know that if you start this player, you'll get this at the start, but maybe another guy's got more potential. Maybe it's the same guy's got both. Right. But and especially considering not to slight the first three opponents, yep. but but you can maybe ease into it before you play Notre Dame. Yeah, I think that that plays into it. Yeah, I think you, you want to figure out who has the you know the highest ceiling, who can develop more. I think that that does play into the into consideration, but at the same time, you're not going to do that at the risk of losing games. And how are you handling it, and how are the quarterbacks handling this? I'm sure they would love to have had a decision, and I'm sure you would like to have had this. Yeah, um, it's college football. 
every year has a different story. Every year has a different different challenge, and you work through. I I, I know in my heart this thing is going to work itself out. Um, but I'm I'm proud of the way the guys are competing. I am. I mean, I, I if if I felt in any other way, I'd say it. But um, but now they're going to have to go, you know, keep pushing through and competing. And you know, if if it goes into the season, it goes into the season. How much better do you feel about your team overall now versus at the start of camp? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. We got to go play football, but um, I think I mentioned to you before that I feel like this is a more veteran team. You know, they're how do you know? You're just more consistent every day. You know, you know what to expect. Um, you know, Tommy Eichenberg. You know, just how many times has he seen counter now in his career? You know, he can call it out before it even happens. He looks at the guard and he starts yelling counter. You know, like that's just um, it. Just it, it has a different feel to it. So excited to get on the field. Looking forward to. You know, kicking off this first first game and, and go see what we got, and then and then the, the journey begins. You know, it's a long road all the way to the end of the season, but our first goal this year is to beat Indiana. You know, second one is to to you know win all the other games leading up to to the rivalry game, and then we're going to go from there. And final question is Doug Lane Reese, the podcast Kings of Columbus. Ryan, sometimes you have a quarterback competition, sometimes you don't. Based on the level of play that you've seen from the quarterbacks, if one of them wasn't here. And you were getting ready, and the other one was going to be the struggle. How would you feel about that quarterback if he wasn't in a competition? No, I feel feel good. Feel good that you know we have a good quarterback that we're going to develop and continue to build on. And um, I mean that's that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. I think that we have confidence that these guys can go in and play and and play at a high level. Now, how high? The expectations are pretty high around here, and I think that's where you know we're not sure, but. Um, but yeah, I would say that it, you know we feel good with both of them right now. So if you're in a place where, based on their level of play, you feel good about both of them, then it really is sort of the process of how you make this decision, how they play. Could how could what do you have to do so that process doesn't go wrong? You know what I yeah, mean? Well, like, hey, we have we have two good quarterbacks, but somebody got in his own head because he was in a competition. Like what? Is there any, not fear, but is that something yeah, to think about? Yeah, I guess. But ultimately, it's going to come down to how, the, how well they play. I mean, you get, you guys are going to see them play here, you know, oh, you know, maybe two, maybe one. We'll, we'll see. But in the first game, and we'll start to evaluate that, and everyone, we'll see. Because ultimately, it's going to come down to how well they play. And then it's going to kind of go from there. And um, I mean, will I be surprised if we get into week six and both of them are playing exactly? I guess they could be. but. Usually, when you start getting into games, you start to see somebody pull away. And uh, I thought maybe that would have happened by now, but it's neck and neck. Um, there was a point twice in camp where I thought one was pulling away from the other, and then two practices went by, and the other one really played well, and the other one kind of leveled off. Uh, and, I, and I would let them know, too, right, right then and there. I'd say, you were pulling away, and he just kind of took over a little bit. you know. And so one thing's for sure is they can't take a, a down off. They can't take a playoff. And they're pushing each other, and that's good. You know, I kind of use that, that racehorse analogy. I mean, they're, they're running down the stretch against each other, and one pulls away, the other one goes. I mean, they're, 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 they're going hard. So, um, you know, the bottom line is, you know, that, that finish line isn't, you know, right now. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're going to keep going and keep running and, and, you know, give them the opportunity, and, and we'll just keep evaluating it. Coach, thank you very yeah, much. Thanks, guys. Yep.